Support for this podcast comes from Redesign.co. As an SGI member, you can receive a 100% fully optimized website that's hosted for free. Have a website you like already? Redesign.co can dramatically boost your presence on Google free for 90 days. Redesign.co is also a full-service digital marketing agency that can assist you with all of your online needs, including PPC. Call 208-261-9898 or visit sgileads.com for more information, including to see how you can get a free consultation of your current website. Welcome to The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. Hello there, SGI family and other contractor friends. I'm so thankful you're here. As a reminder, all episodes of The Successful Contractor Show are available on YouTube as well as your podcast player of choice. Also, if you're a non-member interested in learning more about SGI and how we can help your business grow both on the top and bottom line while also becoming a part of the contracting industry's largest network of contractors, we're having Profit Day seminars in Winston-Salem, Colorado Springs, Dallas, Huntsville, Gainesville, and Norfolk. Give us a call at 866-299-8505 to attend to learn about all we can offer you. Uh, also, SGI members in those markets, if you'd like to come and share with everyone your experiences with the group, give us give your coach a call. We greatly appreciate your help. Today's show is a great discussion I had with Billy Bishop of Top Flight Electric in Winter Haven, Florida, which is about halfway between Tampa and Florida. Billy is one of those guys you just root for because he's a good guy. So it's so great to see him enjoying such remarkable success. Uh, Billy will get into the details, but here's a, a few sneak peeks. Uh, for most of Billy's professional life, he was a pilot. He's flown the likes of Clint Eastwood and Hulk Hogan. Uh, He's also flown as a contractor in Afghanistan for a period. But when Billy's back pushed him out of a career as a pilot, he elected to start his own electrical business. After all, he'd grown up the son of an electrician, and he'd kept up with all the licensing. So as a result, Top Flight was born in 2017. Uh, As you'll hear, Top Flight's launch, pun intended, was anything but smooth. Uh, But over the last three years, Billy's completely changed the company and is really his approach to life in many ways. Uh, Billy's come to realize in order to be successful, he has to help others become successful. He must help his team win. And that's what he does today. He coaches, not orders his people. And he works on helping them achieve their dreams. So as a result, in 2021, Top Fly Electric did over $1.1 million in sales, by far their best year. And it came with a stunning 26.34 net profit percentage. So without further ado, here's Billy Bishop of Top Fly Electric in Winter Haven, Florida, I hope you enjoy it and take away a nugget or two. Billy, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to have you on the show. When when I get stopped by like five or six different people and tell me I need to talk to you, it means we this needed to happen. So uh, for those that don't know your your name, uh, would you please share with uh, everyone your name, your company name, and where you are located? Absolutely. My name is Billy Bishop, uh, Top Flight Electric. We're in Winter Haven, Florida. Beautiful Winter Haven. Now it's just what just outside of Orlando, a little bit southwest. We're, we're about halfway between Orlando and Tampa. An hour okay. one way I'm in Orlando, an hour the other way I'm in Tampa. Very, be- very good, very good. Uh, we're when we're talking for a great reason. Not only were you just referred to me by everybody, but uh, it's because you have a great story. Uh, kind of share with everyone where you're about ready to finish uh, 2021 at, in comparison to where you were maybe three or four years ago. Sure. Um, well, we've been growing about 60% growth for probably the last three or four years. I founded in 2017. In 2017, we did like 40 grand. I was actually in the truck, one one truck. Um, I met SCI in May of 2018. I was probably doing about 17 grand a month and struggling and knowing that this isn't going to work. Yeah. Within two months after meeting SGI and joining, I went from 17 grand a month to uh, within a couple to to within a couple months, I went to about 35 grand a month. Yeah. And uh, that was huge numbers for me back then. Sure. You know? Sure. Uh, we know 35 grand is kind of a so so week now. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it really has changed. Yeah. Uh, we are um, we are currently, I was just doing the numbers, I believe it's 1.1,566,000 as of two days ago, which would have been November 29th. Um, that's I'm looking at my QuickBooks, my PL, which you guys taught me what PL was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I really came in this thing not knowing anything, right? And right. it really just taught me it all. 
Well, well and, and at 1.5, if you're comfortable sharing, it comes at what kind of a profit percentage? I'll scroll down and look and see. All right, so I'm scrolling, scrolling down. Yes, 26.34%. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's pretty good. That's why you're smiling like you're smiling. That. <laughs> that's wonderful. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Yeah, uh, you. And of course, it, it's not uh, it's not just you doing it all. You got a good team behind you. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's 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 share with everyone uh, what your team looks like. Let's start within the office. Who's uh, handling the books, handling the phones, and all that that busyness that's uh, involved in that? Sure. Well, you know, it, life changes, and I had this this team member that was just unbelievable, and she still is. Her name is Wendy. Uh, and Wendy, a couple weeks ago, gave me her final notice. She's going to thank family things and stuff like that, but she did it all appropriately. She's welcome back anytime. Yeah. And in fact, I talked with Wendy as a couple of days ago. I said, can I can I hire you as a consultant? And I want you to manage, still be able to train the new people to come in, be able to, if we called you, I will pay you this much and you know, we'll pay you just to answer the phone. Because yeah. the reality is whatever I'm paying her, if she can answer that phone and answer my question and within a minute or two, that would take us two or three hours to struggle through and not even get it right, it's totally worth it. Right. So um, Whitney's staying on as a consultant, uh, but she handled the phones, the dispatching. Uh, she did the uh, what we call batching inside our software. Um, she kind of did it all, replenishing, mm -hmm. you know, inventory, everything. So she was this one girl shop. And um, and then my daughter, Raquel, uh, came on about six months ago and after her mom passed away. Uh, and um, and so she asked if she could join our company and I thought it would be a perfect fit. And so uh, so I, she brought, came in and she's my daughter, even though she is my daughter, she's a wonderful person. Uh, yeah. I don't know where she got it from. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, so she uh, she really is. And so she I'm bringing her along because she, I can trust with the things because she's his family. And so I'm teaching her to learn all these different skill sets. And so that's the team, that's the team we had. Uh, now it's morphing into, I had just hired a lady. And so we're trying to see if she's going to work out. She's in training right now. And that's what Wendy and my daughter, Brickell are doing currently. Okay. So that's the office. And, uh, but what I've learned from you guys that one third of my time should be spent recruiting. So I'm constantly recruiting. And so, you know, so I'm always looking for new team members. That's fantastic. Now let's let's go ahead and, and talk. Well, let's talk the field. So how many uh, techs are you running uh, currently to, to hit that 1.5? We actually did the majority of it with three three techs. Uh, we yeah, I know. Uh, we uh, the we had a fourth truck came on in July, and I had four trucks running for a short period of time. Unfortunately, then uh, one of my guys went down with um, he uh, he actually fell out of the attic. 30 years experience yeah, you told me yeah about that. yeah it was a yeah it was one of those things man 30 years of experience so he was crawling through the attic heard the crack on the board he said would like that he was on the garage floor oh and it, yeah to, he said before he knew it he said he heard yeah. the crack the next thing he knew it was on the garage floor yeah. and he said uh you know to make matters worse we were changing a panel and the panel was on the garage floor and he landed on it oh <laughs> my gosh yeah so He's still out. Uh, it's been a month or two. So we went back to, we had four trucks for a little while and then we're back yep. to three. And I actually got up to five. I have five via, five trucks and I bought one thinking we were about to move to five. Yeah. And one of my teammates didn't work out. Yeah. And I learned a lesson because I hired him because I thought he could do the job. I didn't uh, think he quite fit our culture. Yeah. And I turned out to be right. Within yeah. a couple of three months, he did, he wouldn't adjust to our culture and uh, I had to let him go. Yep. And so, yep. and I thought the revenue wasn't worth what the toxic, the toxicity, if that's a word, to our yeah. culture. Yeah. And so no, I'm going to do my best now to just keep the trucks parked and hire for culture. Right, right. Yeah, because I mean, the, the one loss guy, if, if you don't make the decision, can lead to a, losing the entire team. I've heard the right. story many, many years. So, um, but that's great. Three trucks, uh, three and a half, I guess, through yeah, most three of and half. Yeah. to hit that number. So we had four, you know? Yeah. And he's, he'll come back at some point, yeah. you know, hopefully it sounds, you know, thankfully it's it, his issues are, are fixable. You know, he's not right. going to have to retire or anything like that. So yeah. that's great. Now, do you have any apprentices that are, are riding along with the techs? I have two. I have two okay. apprentices. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and one, uh, we, we brought him up thinking he was ready to come up to the, to the van. And yep. um, we gave him an opportunity. And, you know, I, I for whatever reason, I have yet to be successful 
of taking her premise and putting it into, into the van. There's a huge difference from the right seat to the left seat. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. I come yeah. from an aviation background. That's where the top flight electric comes from. Right. I spent most of my career in aviation. So I, it's the same thing when you're flying a jet. There's a huge difference of responsibility when you hit, sit in the left seat. We all know how to fly the plane. We all know how to get from here to there. That's the same thing. The apprentices, most of them know how to put a, to wire up a panel and do this and wire, to run a circuit. But there's a huge amount of responsibility. And when they get it on their shoulders, then they kind of see what that guy's really doing. Yeah. And I and fortunately, the guy and the last guy, most of them, unfortunately, implode on themselves yeah. and either just walk out the door or whatever. And that's, I've had that twice now. Yeah. And then and then within a month, within two or three weeks. And then this one. But this last one actually had the character to come back to me and say, I don't think I'm ready. Can I go back? OK. And, yeah. and I said, yeah, absolutely. And I said, yeah. you will, you know, well, let me know when you are ready, because now that yeah. you know what it really is like, right. you know, so I brought him back to the apprentice level. Yeah. Well, that's a good person then. That's someone that's yeah, uh, absolutely. He said, good character knows what, what's going on. So you just spend a little more time because it, it's yep. worth it in the long run. Yeah. So, and now he really knows what it is. So when he comes to me next time and says, I'm ready, I know he will be. Exactly. Exactly. You know, success isn't linear, right? It's ups yeah. and downs and whirly right. rounds. So <laughs> kind of like life. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's the truth. Uh, so, yes, yeah, speaking of life, uh, unique background with uh, aviation. So kind of share with everyone uh, your 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 life, I guess, and as much as you want to share from aviation to how you got into electrical. It's not exactly something you see all the time. No, uh, my dad was an electrician when I was a kid. And so I knew electrical when I was a kid and I got my electrical contractor's license back then. But um, in my uh, in the 90s and my mid 30s, I chased my dreams, became a pilot. Wow. And uh, the mid thirties, you made that adjustment. Yeah, exactly. So wow. I became a pilot and and actually ended up getting a job playing skydivers, and that led to uh, jets. And I ended up in the private jet industry. And and it's easier to tell you places I haven't been in the world than the places I've been. I, wow. I spent uh, I've flown everybody you can think of from Hulk Hogan to Clint Eastwood, spent the day with them. <laughs> so I have a lot of interesting stories in that way. I learned yeah. a lot about first class service there, oh, and that's right. where my first class service comes from. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the part, the, the rest of my story goes, um, everybody loves their private, private jet, but in 08, when recession hit, it was the first thing they got rid of. So I ended up, um, I ended up uh, in Afghanistan uh, flying mm. cargo planes embedded with the military because, oh yeah, so I did three years in Bagram, Afghanistan, about 20 miles from Kabul, uh, flew all over the country. Uh, it is crazy as you think it is. Um, couldn't wait for my jet job to come back, and it did. Around 2014, they came back, and um, and so I got my jet job back, and I was flying for about a year and a half, two years, and in 2016, my back went out. Oh, and I was okay. laying there on my back, uh, getting recuperating, and it was just like I can't sit for long periods of time with the vibration, so I can't be a professional oh, pilot anymore. Interesting. And so I'm, I'm, you know, 55 years old. What are you going to do with the rest of your life, Billy? Yeah. And I invented top flight electric. Wow. You so, just thought I've got this trade this that I, I still know I can, I right. can do it. I, and I couldn't, I, and I, for the life of me, I didn't, didn't know why I kept a current all those years. Every, yeah. every, every two years, I do my 14 hours of CEUs and keep my, right. my current in the state of Florida. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what that's going to happen. And, and so you went back in the truck. So you were able, I mean, you probably had to be pretty careful, though, doing well, some... exactly what well, the service. You know, it's weird. I can crawl a ladder and crawl through the attic and everything. I just can't sit for long periods of time with a vibrating okay. seat underneath me eight hours a day, day in, day out. That just tears my back up. But if I don't, I can still fly for fun. I still go out recreational with friends. Okay. Yeah. You know, for an hour or two here and there. But I'm just, I can't do it day in, day All day. That's all interesting. All day. It's like all day would, would mess me up. Hmm. So I thought of the service industries because what I learned from the recession. What I okay. saw in the recession was all the new construction stopped. Ah. Uh, private jets got they got cut the private jets and all that yep. stuff but you know the people still needed service yep so i designed and thought about the service industry because of i thought it were recession resistant that's what yep. the word came up with it wasn't going to be re recession proof but it was going to be a little bit resistant to it yeah and so far it's proven that with covid yeah you know? and so and of all things the home service industry just shot up and we yeah. we were right in the right place at the right time that's that's great. All right, so you start top flight in 2017, and then you join mm -hmm. us in 2018. So uh, it, that that was a pretty quick turnaround. What would, just were things not? You weren't just generating the kind of income that you thought you could. Oh yeah, that was a struggle. I yeah. couldn't. 
I couldn't figure out how to do this. I wasn't priced right. Yeah. Uh, that was huge. Um, my coaching skills were terrible <laughs> you know, I mean, as a boss. Because yeah. I, what I knew about being a boss was what the people that boss me. Oh, <laughs> you know? sure, sure. And so, yeah. and so I didn't have these great coaching mentors, you know, as bosses. You know, it was, you know, it was a lot of like, you know, do it, do it, or you will find someone that will. <laughs> yeah, know? and that was yeah. put it into jet industry. Sure. It's pretty common. Yeah. 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 So sure. uh, a big thing changed for me, and I think a lot of our success comes from. I was at an expo and, um, you know, I was just listening to Gus and all the other speakers at that expo. It was the one in Orlando. Okay. That was during, kind of during COVID, right? It was the first one we had right. after Temec, the first Temecula was shut down. And then we, and we were in Orlando and, uh, which was only 45 minutes for me. It took longer to pack than to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we were, and, and I was there and, um, it occurred to me about being a coach and coaching a team yeah. and that if I had this mindset and that if I coached my team and allowed them to do what they do and not so much micromanage them yeah. and give them this performance base and it's starting to work, you know, it started working and I went back and I talked about their dreams and a big thing about me coaching them with their dreams is I, I decided that, you know, any dream that's worth anything takes years. Yeah. So if even if your dream is to open a company just like mine, yeah. that we will, I will help you do that because I know how hard it is to do what we do and that it's just going to take years to do it. So if we're shoulder to shoulder trying to help him with his dreams or yeah. her, her dreams that two or three years from now, we're going to shake hands on the way out. And, but I got this great teammate along yeah. the way. Right. Whereas the other scenario was the one I've experienced in the past was, you know, they thought I was getting one over on them. So they were trying to get one over on me. And then yeah. at the end, the whole thing, you know, it's not a very pleasant yeah, situation at the end, yeah. you know? And I said, well, instead of keep on that repeating itself, let's try this. Yeah. And Wendy is a perfect example. You know, I, I talked to her, even the girls in the office about their dreams. What do they want to accomplish in life? And can we help as a team? And yeah. so with Wendy, the way she, she has conducted herself, the way she's even in her resignation, she is I'm keeping her on as a consultant and, right. and so it's it's working out well. Yeah. Was that um well I, I wanted to get back a little bit, but while we're sure. talking about this, is that when you when you came back and talked to them about dreams, is it something yeah. that you had them put in writing or just verbalize one on one, verbalize? They kind of verbalized it to me one on one. Okay. You know? Um yeah, they kind of verbalized it to me one on one. And so yeah. I talked a lot about the dreams and, and where I was at. Mm -hmm. and, and is it just putting um, just putting it out there and, and it, you know, in that idea that it'll happen if you put it out there? Or did you actually maybe help them construct a, a, a loose plan of how do we get to what, what you want? Well, and, and I'm exactly. sure you heard all sorts of things. Too. Yeah, I did. I did. I've heard everything from a boat to uh, American citizenship. Wow. Yeah. You know, and so and then so I want found an immigration lawyer. Oh, wow. OK. You know? So, yeah. So you did so, more than just listen. You're you're, oh, you're yeah. helping. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I thought about it. I talked to the immigration lawyer, and I don't know, it's like five or six thousand dollars over the course of a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. And what well, basically I'd, I'd rather do this and give them a dollar an hour raise. Right. And so uh, you know, and I mean the guy is legitimate, he's legitimate to work. I mean, he, yeah. he's DACA. He's a, he's a he's a DACA status, which is a dreamer. Yeah. So he came Came over when he was two years old. If they sent him back to Mexico, he wouldn't even know where to go. Right, right, right. And he's an outstanding worker and an outstanding teammate. Yeah. You know? So, so uh, you know, I'm I'm doing my best to help him. And so right. we're actually giving a dreamer his dream. You know? That's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's neat. That's yeah. neat. So you're you're making it, it come into a reality. So yeah, that's absolutely. wonderful. Now, is that are, there, are those just constant conversations then? So once they verbalize, like, is that just once a month? Maybe you have a sit down and and talk yeah. about. Absolutely. Work and then talk about their personal dreams. It's not so much that we actually have a sit down. I I'm very much involved. I try. I'm there every morning. I yeah. structure this where I delegate everything. If it's something that's a day to day operation that can be done by somebody else, I train someone else to do it and they do it. That's great. I I got down to what my business day is like. I meet every morning at seven thirty. Our whole team meets there. My goal is that we do a little technical training, maybe at least once a week. We do some technical training. Uh, we'll talk about sales. We talked about the good and the bad of the day before, but my real goal is to get them laughing. 
Okay. If I have my team laughing and they're enjoying their morning and we're actually they're drinking coffee and laughing around the table and that's the way they go out my shop, then I'm successful. Right. And and because any single day I can pick some knucklehead move that's happened. Yeah. And and then the next morning I have all the right in the world to chew them out for it. Sure. But if I chew them out for it and they go out the door with their tail between their legs, the revenue went down because of their knucklehead move. The revenue goes down the next day because of their tail between their legs. Yeah. And so I lose both times. Sure. So I've sure. learned, okay, we had a loss. And so and then so we're gonna so we're gonna to make it a training moment and we're gonna try and some find some laughter in the middle of it. And then we're gonna go out of here in a great mood. That's and great. and then the revenue goes up. Yeah. And so we're we're uh, that's my goal. So by nine o'clock, I'm done. Yeah. Seven thirty, nine o'clock, I'm kind of done for the day in that respect. The other things I have in the day are whatever meetings like this that we're doing right now. I yeah. have um, I, I my other things. I do payroll. I pay the bills. I pull permits. Yeah. But uh, other than that, the day to day is done by somebody else. I continue yeah. to delegate it all. So it makes for my day pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure, you you know, you mentioned you're still spending time oh. re- recruiting. And, uh, that, that's and right. But that's what yeah. the question was. I'm sorry for the sidetracked. No, so that's really, right. So in that, I spend time with the guys just in the morning. We do a lot of laughter. I circle back around at the end of the day and I try and be in the shop around five or so when they're coming back in. Yeah. And so as they're coming back into the shop, I'm there. And it's almost kind of funny because it's almost like, you know, coming, they want to tell me about their day. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and so I'm there and I'm just listening about their day and we're laughing and joking and slapping each other on the back. And then, you know, how this day went or that day went. And um, we do that. And sometimes, a lot of times, since they're coming in one by one during the day, and I'm watching on a GPS tracker, and so I could see them as they're coming in. And, yeah. you know, if one's like 45 minutes away and I'm going home, I'm going home. But if one's like 15 minutes away, I'll wait around. Sure. And and when they come in, and we kind of, that's sometimes we end up in that private conversation. Oh, and okay. that's when, it's kind of an impromptu. It's not a scheduled, so let's sit down and talk. Yeah. It's an impromptu. I know what each person's goals and dreams are, because I've got a small team. Yeah. So that at this moment, I can literally say, you know, well, it's just him, him or her and I together. Right. I can say, hey, so how's that coming? And how can I help you? Right. You, you know, know, I like that it's at the end of the day because I think, you know, I don't know, maybe some people are, are different. Uh, maybe I'm odd. But after you put a full day's work in, you're kind of guards down a little bit. You're kind of tired. You're just a yeah. little bit more vulnerable and a little more yeah. willing to, to communicate versus maybe first thing in the morning, you're tight and you're like, okay, I got a full day ahead. Oh, it's fine. The dream's fine. I'm working on it. But right. I, I kind of like that you circle back towards yeah. the end where you kind of, I think people are probably more willing to communicate about it. I really like being there at the end of the day. And it gives me also a feel of how things are going at the company. Even right. though I delegate everything, I still observe it. Yeah. So I'm I mean I'm constantly kind of just I'm observing everything and watching right. it and that's giving me the ability to coach. Right, right, right. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So what do you do? Um let's go ahead and just keep chasing this line of questioning. Uh you know, you, you if in the morning, you know, people have stuff going on. We've all have stuff going on in your personal lives. You see someone that's just you just can tell they're just off. Right. So what do you what do you do uh, in those situations? Is it just trying to I mean, I know you, we were talking before I hit record that you've got a small uh, you're you're looking to you're moving into a bigger space, hopefully yeah. here soon. But you got a small office right now. So it's hard to kind of have those private conversations. So is it just in the parking lot? You maybe. It is. This, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it would be. I mean, there, there are times I'll wait for private stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, we had um, one of the girls, something was going on with her mom. And literally, as soon as all the guys left, she burst into tears. Oh, you know, the second was just her and I alone, yeah. you know. And so I was able to talk to her and let her know that we're here and just let us know anything you need to do. If you got to leave, you got to leave. And we'll, don't worry about this place. Right. We're, right. we're going to be OK, yeah. you know. Uh, so, um, so I just reassure her of that sort of things. Yeah, you know? that's good stuff. So that's good. That's like coaching. Yeah, yeah, and just to let them know they're safe. Yeah, you know their their job is safe. This place is secondary. We're gonna be here tomorrow. You know, and but and I think in that respect they don't abuse that because you know you can the sincerity I hope comes through that I truly do want them. To, I do truly do. The funny part is my team right now. I truly do care about them. I mean, I, the team that we have right now, I actually, I think individually, I would hang out with pretty much every one of them. You know, even though some of them are, some of them are in their 20s. And I uh-huh. think they're 
neat people, you know, and cool people, you know, and, and yeah. so, you know, I'm 61 now, so it's <laughs> 40 years, not right. like 35 or so, yeah. Right, right, right. You know, but I could see going to places and having fun with them. That's neat. That's neat. Well, that, I guess, I mean, that comes down to your, your choices in hiring and, yeah. and, 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 uh, surrounding yourself with the right people. And I mean, you've been doing this long enough and you've been in business, whether it be flights or what, you know, flying or where you, you, you know, you've, you've hired the wrong people. You know what that looks right. like. Sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and keep going with this. So how, how do you handle recruiting? You said you spend, you know, you, you listen to the SGI model saying you need to spend a third of your time doing that. So what what are you doing in, in, in an industry where everyone is struggling to find good people? Recruiting. OK. Um, yeah. What are you doing? Some of, some of it. Well, I offer I offer thousand dollar sign on bonus and five hundred dollar referral for my guys. That yeah. doesn't seem to move the needle much. It amazes me. Right. Uh, I've even offered uh, since we are an hour from Orlando, an hour from Tampa, that if they want to move here. And okay. basically move to what we call Polk County, Florida. I offer a $2,000 relocation. Uh, it would be like, it's like a, it's a loan that is forgiven 90 days later, okay. you know? And so, yeah. um, so those are things that I offer. Nobody's really bit on that yet. Yeah. We advertise a lot. I do a lot with my, with my team uh, to let them know if you know anybody, you yeah. guys are good, te good techs, no good techs, yeah. you know? Even if they're living in another state or even not, you know, out of, out of town, or if they're willing to relocate to our area, either or if they're willing to make a drive, I got a guy that drives over an hour in because the old place he worked ran him sixty to seventy hours a week. Yeah, and yeah. that's the other thing I found: we're making enough money. I don't have to do twenty four seven anymore. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't have to burn out my guys. Right. So, I uh, I still have twenty four seven on 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 there out there. The occasional phone call that comes in, you know, where, you know, I try and talk to the guys. Does anybody want a weekend call this week? Week, And then I make it worth their while. The service fee, we normally, we just charge a $49 service fee. Yeah. But if on the weekend it's a $149, but I tell the guys, we'll just keep our $49. You get the 100 just for showing up. Yeah. Plus for yeah. yourself, you know? Right. And so, so uh, sometimes, you know, so I offer it to them if they want. I know if there's somebody available on the weekend, if not. I try and tell the client who ever called that, you know, I'm sorry, we don't have anybody available. Yeah, we, we can. I'll try and secure it over the weekend. Most things you can secure with turning off a breaker and yeah. then book them for Monday or Tuesday. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, go ahead. I think mo most people call on weekends and they just want to take care of because they're sitting there right then. It's bothering them. But right. once you talk someone through, you have a script or you just know how to talk to someone because you've been trained in how to do that. They go, right. OK, well, yeah, you know, I work from home or I can work from home and, and meet you then on a Tuesday morning or whatever. So I think people are more understanding with that, especially uh, with electrical, too. You know, it's not like there's water right. pouring into the house. Uh, well, so. a lot of times you tell them there's a 149 service fee just to show up and all of a sudden it's not an emergency anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny like, how that works. Eh, quite okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, OK. All right. Before we get too far away from the, the beginning, kind of the beginnings of the story, I want to circle back. So you do. Uh, so, you know, uh, we said 2017, um, you know, into 2018. Yeah, right. Right. You're like, OK, this isn't working. So did we uh, do we did you get a cold call from us or a piece of. No, direct mail? no, I was I was always proactive in trying to try, trying to figure out something in the service industry. Um, like background being in aviation, uh, I have a, a, a degree in aeronautics from Emory Riddle. I was now a professor at Polk State College, the local community college in the aviation department. So I was always looking at different ways and avenues of learning. And at the local city electric supply, there's a banner and it says, become an Eaton certified contractor. Been there for years. So it's all right at the, the bench. I looked it up, called them, you know, and... Uh, you're like, oh yeah, well, it's this one day class, it's 650 bucks, but then you get on our website. And I looked and there was nobody from Polk County that was an Eaton certified contractor. That band had been there for years. So I thought, well, $650, I'll go to this place in Orlando. And um, and so I went to Orlando and I had one tech that was working with me at the time. Yeah. And we shut down Top Flight Electric for today. And we drove up to Orlando and become Eaton certified contractors sat in this class. Yeah, and so we sat in the class, and then during, and there was probably twenty people in the class, and they had them raise who's the tech here, and almost everybody raised their hand, and who, who's a who's an owner, and no, there was only two of us. Yeah, and uh, so I'm going to talk to that owner during the coffee break, and sure. so I went up and talked to him, introduced myself, and 
time to be Steve Orsolitz of AIM Illumination in, in Orlando. And yeah. Steve, and as Steve's talking to me, he says, you know, I owe everything I am to Success Group International. Huh. And so I said, oh, okay. And I turn around, I'm walking away, and I'm in my little phone writing Success Group International on my eye <laughs> and my notes. <laughs> yeah. you know? That night I Googled them, and they were doing a profit day in Pompano a couple of weeks later. Oh, wow. Um, I expressed interest. Then you guys, I think Patrick contacted me or Ray. And um, and I went, went down to Pompano. An interesting story about Pompano was um, we had one truck and one van. And I had the one, my, my one employee, he'd been with me for about six months. Yeah. And um, we were so small and we didn't have credit cards at the time that every, on the weekend, and I live in a gated community, so I had to have, the, we have this home office that was my daughter's bedroom and we had a storage facility. And in the storage facility, I could park the van. So okay. the van's parked there because it's got the wrap on it. So every weekend I would go get the van, go to the local gas station, pump it, fill it up full of gas and take it back. And so the guys, when they showed up Monday morning, they had a full take of gas or the one guy. <laughs> so this weekend I go and we're leaving for Tuesday for Pompano and, and to go to our profit day. And, and so Sunday, sun, I, I come in there and Sunday night, I get the van, I go pick, fill it up with gas and I go park the van and I look over and the guy's keys to the van, his keys to our service van are sitting in the center console. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, that knucklehead, you know, it's, I'm, I'm going to show him. I'll take these keys. And when he shows up tomorrow morning, he'll know. He'll have to call me. Sure. That, that was his way of quitting. I was going to say, he never showed up. <laughs> so, I've heard that story before. I found yeah. out by Monday at noon that he was not. <laughs> You're sitting <laughs> there like, where like, is this guy? Yeah, He's late, he too. What's he phone, doing? Nothing. So now I've got no employee, no tech, jobs <laughs> book, leaving Pompano Tuesday. Yeah. And I just... So, you know, we were at Wood's End. I knew we were we were we were sinking. Yeah. We were absolutely going to go underwater. I saw it coming. Yeah. And um, and so I said, let's call. And uh, I was uh, I had a fiance at the time. Her name was Jessica. And we we I said, just call everybody and tell them you know they're sick and we're not going to be able to make you know we'll have to reschedule. Sure. And we did what we could and we left and we went to pump. Yeah. And when uh when I signed up for for SGI, we were. I thought we were going under, and I, I looked at her and I said, "We're going under one way or another. It'll just be one more person we owe money to." <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, and so we signed the papers, and, that's and that's how it started. Wow. And then within two months, we went from seventeen grand a month to thirty-five grand a month, and that was the first the first thing which gets getting priced right. Support for this podcast comes from Goodman. Goodman Manufacturing Company LP produces a complete line of refreshingly affordable air conditioning and heating equipment. All Goodman brand products are designed, engineered, and assembled in the United States. For more information, visit GoodmanMFG.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm talking with Billy Bishop of Top Flight Electric in Winter Haven, Florida. So far, we've learned Billy's incredible journey to starting Top Flight Electric, and we've talked about his approach to management and coaching his team a little bit already. Uh, in the second half of the interview, Billy will walk and talk us through some of the other core changes he's made to the company to drive revenue and make it more profitable. He'll also go more in depth into the company's culture, which has served as a foundation of this incredible new success he's enjoying. So let's jump back into my conversation with Billy Bishop of Top Flight Electric in Winter Haven, Florida. So the first thing was getting price right. How what what were, were, were how how much of an increase did you need to uh, to make in your you price? know a, a, well substantial and I guess knowing our value you know because yeah. there, there, so many people are the time and material price you know guide around at you know in this rural area it's not it's rural for Florida I mean there's more rural areas but you know we're only popular thirty five thousand but we're you know but the thing is the um, so I actually sat down and tried to come up with my own flat rate pricing guide. And we sat down one day and spent the whole day going, okay, well, how long would it take you to do this? Well, yeah. let's figure out at this much time and this much money. And, and this is what the material is. And this is what the markup should be. And even that was low, you know, real low. And yeah. so then, uh, so we came up. So then um, when we got the straightforward pricing guide, I guess it was quite a little bit of a difference. I didn't go as high as they wanted me to at first, <laughs> you know, because it was sure. like, oh, wow. But because I thought, okay, well, this is still a raise from where yeah. I was at. Yeah. And learn how to do the system. Then we can start inching it up. And that's exactly how we did it. Okay. So what, like every couple months you just start 
Or well, every at every, that time, it was every six months. I think okay. I was still like another ten percent or so, sure. and then actually, I haven't. My, my last raise was April, so okay. we're due for one. Sure. You know. Oh yeah, considering how things have been. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why we did it in April. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So sure. So we'll do for one, and I'll try and do that again. I'll look at those probably for right up the first of the year and see where we're going. Right. And then we'll also, you know, you always get scared. You know, the sales will go down. But <laughs> you know, people don't know. <laughs> they just, they don't. They just, if you show up and you do a yeah. nice job, and you're, yeah, it really yes. is. I, our core value is we're a first class service company. We just happen to be great electricians. Oh, so I like that. Provide that first class service. Yeah. They'll do it. You know, we're right here by Disney. Everybody knows Disney's expensive. Nobody oh. talks about the price. They all talk no. about experience. So yeah. we try and bring a, what I call my private jet experience or a Disney experience to the homeowner. Yeah. To our clients. Yeah. Now, so let's talk about that value. So was that something you, it sounds like that's something you always, you know, valued was providing value. But what did that mean now after joining? How did it, it get enhanced? Were you, I'm, were you guys in uniforms already at that point? Or we were... I mean, that was you. I guess yes, we were yeah. we were in uniforms. We had some uniforms because um, we had an idea, you know, where it was a franchise I was trying to like mimic, sure. you know. And so uh, I I had an idea about that about the floor savers and things like that. I think we yeah. still call them shoe covers or booties back then. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> because we weren't taught the, what words words matter, right. you know. And uh, so we did have we had that sort of thing. But the value that came along after that, the professionalism that I talk about my to my guys, yeah. to let them know that they are something special, that we are professionals here, that, that every person, every electrical company out in, in this county has a guy with a T-shirt with their name on it, yeah. most likely chewing tobacco. Yeah. And, and so I said, but this is not us. We are the collared uniform guy and we are this, we are that. So when they go out, they realize they are professionals. Yeah. And we talk about electrical safety and about being professional when they come into our home, because that's what they're hiring as a professional technician to come into their home and let them know that their home is safe. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely. Um, how about um, like guarantees and, and warranties? Did that, putting that in writing, you know, that's such a big part of it to, to give people, homeowners, that peace of mind. Was that something right. that was different for you that you had made, had not had that in writing before? Yeah, I don't think it was in writing now. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, it right. Wasn't right. Right. In right. Fact, I thought a year was, you know, I wrote a year, so I was just still a year. Yeah. But the reality is, if, I, if we do a panel right, it really doesn't matter if it's 10 years. The panel's not going anywhere, you know? Right, right. And so I have no problem if somebody wants 10 years on a panel. But yeah, give it to them. Is that you what know? you promote or what do you what do you generally tell? It's going to be five years. Five years. Five years. That's still. Five, that's... five years on a panel, you know, yeah. something like that. But but you know i mean and it's only because we haven't we've talked about it a zillion times i mean why not offer a lifetime on a panel right you know i mean it's you know because if it's truly the panel that's going bad yeah. but, i mean we're talking about workmanship and defective parts and material on a panel yeah not well it's going bad because nobody maintained the circuit that's a whole different conversation right, you know? right. You know, yeah yeah, you know, I mean, if the panel didn't go bad, the circuit was the reason this thing overheated. For sure, for sure. Uh, also, part of that value proposition um, is is you know bringing the idea of a safety inspection, right? And right. And, and giving people options versus saying, well, you got to do this, right? Oh, yeah. Mrs. Jones, you just got to do it, and then going, oh, you know, and that just leaves a terrible taste in the customer's mouth. Well, how, how did you? Uh, I guess it comes down to training, right? So you you had to right. train yourself on that. So did you go to like service essentials early on, or, or what did you do? I went to services. I did a service essentials. Uh -huh. So I learned a lot about, about feelings. Uh, we have, I, I coach feelings, you know, uh -huh. which is really strange. We do book studies. Uh, we have yeah, book studies. I heard Sonia was telling me about that. So we finished our seventh book this morning. At this morning at seven o'clock, I had a whole team at IHOP, and we finished the last book of our, this is our seventh book. I handed out, I handed out our new book, you guys are going like this. Our new book came from our last expo, which was Andy Andrews, uh, the the uh, Traveler's Gift. Yeah. And when he spoke at our expo and talked about the book that was New York Times bestseller, I looked up the book. And so I bought a copy for everybody wow. and I handed them out just about an hour ago. Wow. So we finished up our book called The Carpenter, which by, was by John Gordon, which is the same guy that wrote Energy Bus. Yeah. And so 
Uh, we what we do is we I hand out the books. They're gifts. I don't want yeah. them back. I don't do whatever you want to them. They're yours. Yeah. They're usually some sort of self help book personally, but also in business. Yeah. And um, and so they're usually smaller books, like a hundred something pages. We'll sure. go do like split the book into thirds, do thirty or forty pages over a three week period. Everybody's supposed to read on and a third in the uh, on their own time. And we all meet at IHOP. They're on the clock. I pay for them to be there. I buy yeah. their breakfast, anything they want. And in participation, I hand out a twenty five dollar Visa card for the most person that participates the most, and fifteen dollars of Spark Starbucks for second place. Oh, and wow. so at the end, we all decided who participated the most. And who was in second place? And we oh, good! Out. You make it. You make it a collective thing. So it's exactly not like so because you're not, if you want the twenty five dollar, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. so and there's obviously people that read and people that didn't and things like that. But then it's more of a peer pressure thing to keep them all reading. Yeah. So we've got. Uh, so that's that's what we're doing right now, and wow. I'm so really proud of that. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. That's a, is that the seventh book this year that you've done, or over seventh book, oh, so many years? Year. Yeah, I think I started about a year ago or so. Um, I learned it. I learned it through somewhere in SDI. It was somebody else that was doing it. We have I a can't... book list somewhere in in some old, uh, you know, InstaFix binder that used to be this big. Right. But, I, but I mean, some of those books are you know are old. But that's that's great. That you're trying to find. And newer was, stuff too. I remember that was Snyder Heating and Air out of out of Jacksonville. I met oh, them at yeah. a Zoom meeting. Yeah. And they and they still told me about the book study. And it really was. I think we were doing Zoom meetings at that time. Okay. And they're still about this book study. So I'm like, wait a second, your your, your managers are reading books. Goes, no, no, our techs. Yeah. I mean, you got your techs reading books. He goes, Yeah. Yeah. I go, okay, yeah. I want to learn how. And we actually made a platoon meeting up to Jacksonville and we all rode up to Jacksonville and spent the night being up there and had a whole tour of their facility and had our meetings up there and I was very interested in book study. They told me all about it. And they shared it with me. And I started I it myself. They, I forgot they did that. I, it's been a couple of years since I interviewed uh, Ed in, in that whole company. Yeah, Ed and Woody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess you've you've heard the news. They've sold. Uh, the yeah, account. I did. So they're they're living uh, they're living pretty good right now. So yeah, I think, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so I think they. Well, anyway, but uh, but that's great that you brought that, and everyone was receptive to it as well. They I were, mean, I, they I were. mean, even if if you know, not everyone's maybe reading, but they're not like being combative about it, or they're not. No, not them. at all, not at all. Yeah. It's part of the team and the culture. Yeah. You know, and so, and I kind of let them know this. This is part of our culture. And this yeah. Is what we're gonna do you know, and so, and they kind of know, you know, uh, um, they know what's important to me and what's not important to me. They know I'm a very, I'm kind of, I give them autonomy to do to kind of do their own day but at the same time there is a structure yeah yeah it's not a total free for all and so sure. they know they know what, where where i am and where where i you know what i want what i want to right. accomplish for all of right. us that's great i mean i you know you're empowering them you're showing them that that you do care which you obviously do and and that you're investing in them um, another part of though of training is the actual training of the nuts and bolts of how to deliver an exceptional call, right? So that's that's right. using the safety inspection, that's doing the right. options and all that stuff. So how do you, you know, you hire somebody now? The, of the guys that you have, are they were they all uh, seasoned electricians or, or one two? Actually, no. I've been very fortunate. They all came from a, a competing franchise. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, majority of them, one two, the ones I have right now. Uh, and one guy was from a former. He moved to this area, and the funny part was he worked for an SGI vendor out of Kentucky. Oh, and wow. how I found out was in the interview when hmm. I started talking to him about the straightforward pricing guide. He goes, "Yeah, I've used a straightforward pricing guide before," oh, and wow. I'm like. And I go, really? He goes, yeah. I go, well, there's only two people have straightforward pay pricing guides. It's a franchise and it's SGI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I right. said, uh, so to come to find out, he gave me the phone number to the guy. And I called him and he was an SGI vendor out of Kentucky. And But the guy the guy that I was interviewing didn't realize he was SGI, but knew about the straightforward pricing guide. that's something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a good way to, to, to have, you know, to find technicians if you can make yeah. that work. So, so let, that, that helped probably shorten the learning curve right is, oh it is, does yeah right right so yeah. you don't have to explain the very basic well, what i what i talk this is what i really what's really helped and it's like i'll give you a quick thing i talked to him about electrical safety i talked to him about being a professional and i say statistically an electrician is called into home once every seven years right. so i said in this 14 year window we're the one professional walks into this person's home and if we go in there 
and their devices devices melted on the back because it's backstabbed. And we repair that one device and we walk out the door. That person thinks that the professional told them that their house is safe. Wow. Yeah. I said it is our duty to go through that house and find everything in electrical safety that needs to be done and to let them know every single bit of it. Yeah. And they said, and then you let them make the decision. Yeah. And see, this is breakers should be replaced every 15 years because that's a metal tension that's pulled tight in there. And you know, I will guarantee you after 15 years, not protecting your home the way it was the first day it was installed. It's yeah. not going to trip like it did on day one. And I said, so, but that's, that's, that's the heartbeat of your home, that panel. Yeah. We can talk in our area, search for lightning is big. Oh, so yeah, we're sure. Lightning capitals of, of the world. So we, we, we tell them about search protection. We yeah. tell them about, about if their devices are backstabbed. We also talk about those breakers when they're tripping. Reality is when this breaker was put in here, all of them were put in here on the same day. Right. So let's talk about replacing them all with a panel rejuve. Reju and then yeah. let's talk about the, the devices in your home that when this one here came out, it's backstabbed. The entire house was backstabbed because that's how they do it in new construction. Yeah. And so your whole house should be replaced because we caught this one before anything really bad happened, but there might be one two rooms over. Yeah. So I talk about electrical safety and I tell them, my guys, that yeah. it is our duty as a professional in that 14 year window to protect this home because that's what yeah. they're asking us to do. If yeah. you prepare that one thing and walk out, they think their home's safe. So yeah. it's our duty to do that, offer three options. One is with everything we find. Yeah. And then the second, the second one in between is maybe not with on a, a surge protector on everything and through any secondary surges on air conditioning stuff. And then the last one would be really what they called us out for here for, like we got this one breaker just tripping. Yeah. You know, and then so when we offer those three options and talk and and tell them which is the buy-in is this, that we are professionals and it is about electrical safety. Yeah. GFIs, if you look up GFIs, they should be replaced every 10 years because mm -hmm. they're not working at three milliseconds like they're designed to do after 10 years. Right. The technology changed. I wouldn't have a 10-year-old phone. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, That's true, right? You know? I mean, it's what a good analogy. Yeah. Electrical to be there, you know? And so um, I teach my guys that. Yeah. And we train on that. And they go out there believing that. And when they believe it, they can sell it. Isn't that something? It's confidence. It's, yes. it's that, that they are actually providing a service versus pushing something. Because that's what you always hear. Oh, my guys don't want to be salespeople. We're not asking you to be a salesperson. You're being a teacher, an educator. Right. That's, Absolutely. Fantastic. that's fantastic. And always let them make the decision. They're just We have been shocked. Um, the bit, we went to a mobile home once, and um, we role play. And in the morning, I say, you know, we role played, and it was a flickering light in a mobile home. I said, let's role play it. So we role play it. And then um, I go, and so I send my guy there. He calls me back a couple hours later. He says, I'm going to need some help. I said, okay. <laughs> so I said, tell me about it. He goes, I sold it for $8,600. Oh, wow. I said, really? I said, he said, tell me, I said, tell me it's going to fix the flickering light. He says, I told him it might not. I said, really? He said, I said, he said, okay, so I got to talking to the guy. And he found out that this mobile home was this man's forever home. And he said, it, it doesn't look like much, but it's where I plan. He was in his 70s or 80s. He says, I, I plan on living the rest of my years here. Yeah. And I'm not going anywhere. And I want it safe. Yeah. And so the guy said, well, if you want it safe, this mobile home needs a new panel, yeah. new devices, surge protection. Yeah. New counting system. Yeah. $8,600. And the man, the man said, please do it. Yeah. So. And it you came from know. yeah, and it came from just communicating with them versus coming right. in with blinders and trying to fix oh, what you think is broken. Right. Instead, you fix what he wanted, which was safe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, oh, and it turned out the flickering light did get fixed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> he was told, "Well, this might not do it," <laughs> but it did. How frequently are you having those training sessions and, and reiterating the value, say, and then going through the different repairs and how to? To discuss those repairs with your team, just to kind of, because you know, if it's not constant, it can be right. forgotten. We 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 have every morning we have a meeting, seven thirty. Um, once a week, once a week we have a technical meeting. Uh, once a week we have the spin, the prize wheel to spin, where they earn stars, you know, and stuff like that. And and so funny part, some one of the prizes is ten push-ups. And <laughs> once, a couple, a couple of weeks ago, two guys had ten push-ups. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but um, we meet every morning, 
And I kind of free flow it. If I don't have anything prepared, I at least say, let's talk about the good and bad of yesterday. Yeah. And so this, they start talking about their days and the clients they learn and, and then they share with each other how they would approach different things. Okay. And so, and, and we hear all the different scenarios and just go over that. My guys are so skilled right now that I don't go too much role playing anymore. But as we get role playing, like when we bring in a new guy, we'll start role playing again. Yeah. And but we haven't role played for I'm gonna say a couple three weeks, okay. which I kind of miss it. But I mean, honest, the, the guys are really really skilled right now. Yeah, that's fantastic. But it's great every day you're talking, every day you're putting them every, in every situations. Morning. My goal, yeah. if I'm not present, and I learned this in COVID, when we had to separate. And when when we first when we kind of first started and the office staff, we, we reduced it down to me and me and this one girl. And we both worked from the house. She lived close by, so she worked, worked from her home. I worked from my home and we didn't see the guys. And so they went into in the morning, got from the shop, got the vans, had their assignments on their on their iPads. And in the evening, they dropped the paperwork off in the office. And sometime in the night, we pick up the paperwork and we didn't see them for probably, I don't know, six weeks. Oh, wow. Actually physically see them. Yeah, I watch the morale just go down because they're there you go know, in their mind. We're sitting at home watching TV, you know, sure. whatever, just goofing off and, and they're out there digging ditches and crawling through acts. Yeah. And so I realized that me being present and us being together was important. Yeah. And so when I as soon as I could get us all back together, I thought, no, we're not working remote anymore. And yeah. so every morning I get in there. And so every morning I'm there just to be a part of the team. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what that what that does to, to morale and what it does to just performance. Um, and actually, it's, I, I wanted to, to circle back to performance. I mean, um, you're, you're you know, you're investing in them. But, you know, obviously this is a numbers business. So um, do you have the scoreboards on the walls? I mean, how are you? Uh, are you doing it? We have a revenue board. We have a revenue board. Uh, we have prizes. Uh, we, we have bonuses for getting over 10 grand in a week. Uh, and we. Okay. It was funny for one guy, and and then I took that and I said, okay, besides your your bonus, your regular commission, if you get over ten thousand dollars revenue in a week, I'll give you next another hundred dollars on top. And then and then I tell you what, I'll tell you what, every twenty five hundred dollars, I'll give you another hundred bucks. So if you get twelve five, you get two hundred dollars, fifteen, you get three hundred. Yeah. And I took it up to twenty thousand, and it was like a five hundred dollars on top of if you do twenty grand in one week, I'm going to give you five hundred dollars on top of your paycheck. Yeah. So one week, one of my guys, by Wednesday morning, he was at 22 grand. <laughs> and, so, and I was like, okay. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll keep it going. Yeah. But, you know, if you do the math at 30,000, it would be $900. I go, you make 30,000, I will give you, I will give you a thousand bucks. He did 32. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's so, a, it, yeah. Yeah. And it was really wonderful. So by the time he, um, by the time he um, got to um, that next week, he did like twenty thousand. So in a two-week period, I pay every two weeks. Okay. He did um, he did over fifty thousand dollars in his truck by himself. By the way, he is a crown champion. If you look, you look him up. And, All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's already made crown champion this year. That's and um, I got a second guy that might make crown champion. Nice. And um, and uh, we we actually even got a reward award. For, I think it was top in June or July or something like that. We yeah. received that in the mail the other day. And it's on our wall. Uh, so the um, I'm sorry, I got distracted. Where was no, it? that's all right. Yeah. Uh, we're, no, just how you were keep you know keeping everyone uh, diligent about their numbers and their performance. Yeah. And then you were oh, talking. Oh, so his check for the two week period was ten thousand six hundred dollars gross. Wow. Yeah. So that was <laughs> our highest paycheck we ever did. But that's for a technician, and I love doing it. I yeah. absolutely love doing it. And 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 so to tell everybody. Look, man, you can make six figures at this job. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's take it home to your family and have it and support your family in a, a great way. That's great. So you, that's all your guys that are on a commission then. So that's, that's yes, how. I pay I pay eighteen dollars an hour and or eighteen percent commission, whichever is greater. Okay. The cap to sit at is they have to keep the material within fifteen percent of the truck. Ooh, uh, I like it. For the job. So yeah. if they go over that fifteen percent, I ding them just a little. The quick example is. $150 is 15% of a thousand dollar job and say they yep. spent $200 on that thousand dollar job. I would take the extra $50 they went over. And now instead of them getting 18% of a thousand, they'll get 18% of 950. Okay. I would take $50 up top. And so that's their game. 
So, so they try their best to keep it done inside 15% of the job. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the only other ding I do is that I do a 2% ding if you need a helper or an okay. apprentice. Sorry, an apprentice. I learned the last right. thing I call them apprentices. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So right. If, you need a, if you need an apprentice, uh, then it's a 2% ding. So they're making 16% on the job instead of 18. Yeah. Yeah. So that way you keep everything within your labor percentages. And that's why you're, you're hitting and your and your materials. And that's why you're hitting your gross margin, which is why you're hitting right. 26%. Yeah. At, yeah. at 26, I'm doing 26% net and still paying like that. Paying yeah. your decencies like this. So yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, again, you're charging what you need to charge. You're providing yeah. the value, right? People are are comfortable with you. They see the value. It's amazing. It's a win-win-win. It's a great thing. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I we I, we've been talking a little over an hour. Hope you have time for a few more questions. I'd love, I love. I got to talk about your profit platoon, right? Because yeah. uh, you got a great group uh, of of members in the I Florida do. area. And just kind of share with uh, those that don't know what what a profit platoon is, and uh, and what you know what you guys do. A profit platoon is all the members of FGI that are want to meet. We'll meet. We meet once a month somewhere in the state of Florida at their shop, mm -hmm. and we spend four or five hours together. Uh, we uh, have accountability with each other. We set yep. goals. Uh, if we don't meet our goal, uh, it costs us a hundred bucks, and hundred bucks. <laughs> hundred dollars goes to folds of honor. I was going to say it goes, to good, yeah, it <laughs> so, goes for good cause. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Sometimes folds of honor does very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we set yeah. a goal for ourselves of like, this is what I want to accomplish this month. And I come back, we come back next month. Like, Did you accomplish it? It's a yes or no. It's not, well, kind of, sort of. Well, I said no. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm John Pelosi of Home Service Heroes and man, his father, Manny. Uh, they've been great mentors to me personally. Uh, I couldn't thank them enough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get emotional. That's okay. I mean, it's life-changing stuff, a lot of this. That's yeah. why this is such a cool business. I've been doing it almost 20 years, and to see the lives that have, have changed. And yeah, I met those guys when they were, were just, <laughs> just little bitty yeah, contractors, right? And, uh, and it's this just Friday, so we're going to their new place. They're, they just moved to a new place in Tampa. We're going there, and we're excited about seeing it for them. Uh, but really, Russ Noyes is in part of that group. Uh, Russ, oh, no, no, he's Rhino Roofing now. He's out of New Smyrna Beach, right. Florida. Um, he he keeps us on track with our with our with, our, with budgeting and budgeting, budgeting. He's always talking about that. Uh, but I learned about that from him and profit and loss sheets and balance sheets. And we learned we take our profit and loss and our QuickBooks and we put it in percentages. So that when I'm sitting next to John, even though our numbers aren't close, our percentages we can compare. You know, because my material spend, my labor spend, all those should be the same in percentages. Yeah. And so I learn a lot from those guys. Uh, and I mean, unless I can't, I'm going to leave somebody out. But I mean, there's well, Lou okay. out, out of Oakland Electrical. There's Bruce and Alice out of Gator in West Palm Beach. Uh, you know, and Steve Morselitz of Illumination. You know, uh, there's uh, Jefferson Henry out of Deep Electric in Orlando. Uh, there, so I, there's probably, oh, Chris, Chris Clary of Clary Plumbing is in our group and so these are the like the core that are always kind of trying to make it yeah yeah you know? and it's nice because it, again it keeps accountability right and then you yep. also get honest direct feedback right because when okay. you're the only when you're in when you're at top of your own business there's no one and you're by yourself and you don't have that yep. you you know yep. you don't have someone being honest with you you don't know what what you're doing right or wrong they had yeah no it's true it's true we have a marco polo and uh, Marco posed this app where we kind of talk on walkie talkies and we talk to each other during the day and quit put questions on it. And it's oh. only just our group in it. OK. You know? And um, it's been so helpful. And it started out that as simple as this, I wasn't getting to work on time and being there at eight o'clock in the morning. At that time, it was eight. Yeah. And so the challenge for my hundred dollars was to be there on time every morning. But the only way I was going to do that was report on Marco Polo to the group that I was in my office at eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. And so I did it for a month and then I changed it to seven 30 <laughs> on my own, but yeah. that accountability, because the other guys looked at me and said, no one's going to take you serious until you show up on time for yourself. Yeah. Right. And so without other people that I look up to being able to sit me down and say, Hey, look, we want you to succeed, but in order to succeed, you have to do these basic steps. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so without that conversation and me being willing to listen. Yeah. And take direction. 
you know? <laughs> right. And not, and not take it personally. Sure. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, don't, it stings. But, yeah, yeah, but it's a good sting, though, right? Yeah, nothing yeah, nothing should, good should. comes easy. It always comes from <laughs> some type of adversity or difficulty. I've yeah. always been convinced of that. Um, so that's great. So that's that's a, that's a great group. It's it's amazing what you guys do for each other. I, I know I know a bunch of those members real well, and it's just exciting. You're all doing so well. Um, I guess just kind of in a, a few ra- questions, just wrapping up. You know, you've really what would you say, sixty percent growth the last yes. handful of years. Um, what do you think the biggest reason is? Is it just giving ownership to the people and letting them do their thing, or, or what do you say? I don't want to put it in your own mouth. You, you let me see hear what you have to say. I think it's from the, the coach team mentality, the changing from boss employee to coach and team. I think it's the book studies that helps a culture that lets them know that I care about them as human beings. I think it's like let's talk about your dreams and be sincere about it. Yeah. When I get that, I get a buy-in from my group, right. from my team. Yeah. Listen, I was with you guys at Expo out in San Diego, you know, Temecula. I, I was gone. I mean, yeah. I, I I got four days early to supply in San Diego, so I didn't. I was gone from like September 29th through October 11th. <laughs> yeah, as a small business. And, and in October we had a record month, and we cleared two hundred thousand for the first time. I wouldn't even air. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so well, I'm still overseeing it because but I can with today's technology, I got apps on my phone, I got a laptop, I can oversee it and not yeah. have to be involved in today to day. Yeah. They see you care, so they care. They want to do yes. well for you and for the business. And then knows that it benefits them as well. They Absolutely. Know you, it's performance you know. based. I mean yeah. they're 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 they they are getting rewarded and it's yeah. okay. You know, yeah. and yeah. that's wonderful. So okay, so uh two more questions. One is where do you see the business and, and, and yourself in, you know, five years or 10 years? What do you, what, what's your, your long-term goals? Um, well, to continue to growth. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I'm currently trying to get this fifth van on the road. Yeah. <laughs> I, got five, right. I got two parked right now. Uh, but that's going to be, a, you know, we're going to focus on recruiting and stuff like that and yep. get those done. Right way. Um, yeah. I see what's moving into a, a new place, obviously. And um, I'm, I think, my original goal was eight bands, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think we're going to achieve that. Yeah. Um, I think, um, and then it would probably be moving towards more territories out further out from where I'm at. Okay. Right now I have an hour pin drop from where I, from where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, then, but I've got a guy that moves an hour away. So we're starting to think, well, why not just let him keep the band at home? We'll yeah. have our meeting a couple times a week and then we'll schedule meetings from, you know, jobs around his house sure sure you know because why not take advantage of that so we're we're looking at different scenarios like that if we were to do that then you know i don't know where we would go from there yeah very good very good all right last question for you then get you on your on your day uh just what advice would you have for for other say new members or or you know members that maybe have just joined or struggling and how to get things steered in the right direction what 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 advice would you provide I had to be willing to take direction. I had to be humble enough to realize that I didn't have all the answers myself. Yeah. Um, and I had, you know, the thing that I, you guys taught me about was feelings and, and it really is about feelings. And, and I, and I, I want to leave it with that. I have a poster uh, in, in my office and it's my Angela quote. And then you guys actually quote, I've heard it same quote, but it was like, people will forget what you told them or people forget what you did for them, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. feel. And I give the example of this. I can run into somebody I haven't seen in 10 years. Before I get close to them, I know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that I ran into them, yeah. you know? And it's a feeling that was left for me. And I give that example to my guys because, and my girls because everybody can relate to that. Yeah. You know it's that feeling. So I tell them, we want to leave a good feeling with each other and with our clients. Mm-hmm. And so, but you guys kind of helped me steer towards that direction of seeing yeah. that, that yeah. it wasn't so much that. So the Success Group International, has already built the wheel. Mm-hmm. The only thing I had to do was build that wheel in Polk County, Florida. Yeah. And so I'm not reinventing the wheel every day. It's already yeah. built. Yeah. You know, just got to follow the instructions and be open to it. Be open to it. That's right. That's right. Oh, good stuff, Billy. Well, hey, I really enjoy all all your time. This was a really enjoyable That's conversation. Fine. Love the positivity, the smile. It's It makes <laughs> my day. So, hey, thank you so much for all, all your time and all your insight. This was just a blast. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Take care. All right. Have a great rest of your day. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. That's Billy Bishop of Top Fly Electric in Winter Haven, Florida. Thanks for joining us. If you feel like you have a great story worth sharing that would also help other contractors, email me at bhouchin at yoursgi.com. Also, if you enjoyed today's episode, if you're on YouTube, give us a like and subscribe. If you're on your favorite podcast player, leave us a five-star review. And please join us for future episodes. It's my promise to you that we will continue to interview successful contractors and other influential individuals in the residential contracting world. This is The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International. Support for this podcast comes from Synchrony Financial. Allow homeowners to pay at a rate that fits their budget with a merchant fee that fits yours. Visit www.toolbox.mysynchrony.com for more information. The Successful Contractor podcast is part of the Success Group International family. SGI is the largest member-owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. SGI provides its members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager to help membership. For more information about Success Group International, visit www.yoursgi.com.